day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Book Gardener webinar, Testing Hardness and Flexibility. Before we start, first, some information about the audio connection. I hope you are able to hear me. If not, there are two possibilities available. Either you use a, your computer to listen, which is the easier method, or if you want to call in by telephone, please click on all global call-in numbers and select your country. My name is Resul Zengin. I've been working as an application specialist for Big Gardner since 2015, and I'm responsible for all application issues regarding our product, product and their software. In addition, I'm also doing trainings, webinars, and web seminars for appearance, color, and our physical test instruments like abrasion, hardness, and viscosity. Before we start, I would like to give you some general information about this webinar. First of all, don't be surprised. There is a general mute setting configured by me. This is necessary to eliminate any external noise. The presentation will last approximately 50 minutes, so we will have about 10 minutes to answer the question. And um, if there's a remaining question, I will answer afterwards by email. Please use um, the chat button. You will find it here for the questions. Secondly, I would like to ask you to write down um, your questions and ask after the presentation. The presentation will be sent to you in the next days by email. In addition, the seminar is recorded and will be published on our website a limited time, approximately two weeks, so you can listen it again. Now let's start with the web seminar. The first question is, what is hotness? Hardness is the resistance of a coating to a mechanical force, such as pressure, rubbing, or scratching. Therefore, the term hardness in coating often leads to misunderstandings. A coating should have a certain hardness, but on the other hand, it should um, also have a certain flexibility. In order to be able to determine the hardness and flexibility of coatings, various test methods will be shown now. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce the agenda. In the first part of the presentation, I will talk about hardness in theory and practice. The second part will cover the testing methods for flexibility in theory and practice. Uh, what does it mean in theory and practice? The theoretical information as described in international standards with practical examples and hints will be explained. The international standards include the definition of the terminology as well as the description of the test method. Furthermore, the description refers to the procedure including the sample preparation. Moreover, the international standard gives you a guideline how results should be reported so that you really know how valid your test result is. The aspect of test results with the precision statement will also be discussed. Then the apparatus will be described. And last but not least, um, the test report is presented which you communicate with your customers or suppliers. 
The third and last part of the agenda will be answering your questions. Like I already mentioned in the beginning, we will have about 10 minutes to answer questions online. Let's start with part one, hardness. The hardness um, is defined in DIN 55945 as the resistance of a coating to a mechanical force such as pressure, rub, or scratching. It can be caused, for example, by car wash brushes, fingernails, or animal scratches, like this cat in the picture sitting on the car. Unfortunately, it can also be caused by violation by keys or sharp items, like a ring, or when driving by car through nature, through nature, shrubs and branches can damage the vehicle as well. Therefore, the coating requires a high hardness and at the same time should have a sufficient elasticity. In reality, these two factors are opposing and need to be optimized. The advantages of hardness is to be less sensitive to scratches, abrasion, and dirt. However, the disadvantage of high hardness is lower flexibility, which results that the coating becomes brittle and even splitter. Here, you can see it very well. So, the challenge is to get a good balance between hardness and flexibility depending on your specific application. How you, can you objectively measure hardness? There are three different types of hardness evaluations. The first one is abrasion hardness, the second one is the indentation hardness, and the third is the scratch resistance. In this webinar, we will not talk about the abrasion. This topic will be discussed in a separate webinar. Today, we will focus on indentation and scratch resistance. Additionally, we will concentrate on the different flexibility measurements, such as bending, cupping test, impact resistance, and the damping method. The damping method uses a pendulum hardness tester, which is not a hardness test, but a flexibility test. Because of historical reasons, many people refer, refer to it as pendulum hardness. But in reality, this method evaluates the flexibility of a coating. Let's start with the indentation hardness based on Buchholz. Here we have an example of a technical data sheet of an ecosystem manufactured by the company called Freilacke. In this technical data sheet, you can see the char characteristics of the coating system, the physical data, and also the testing results for mechanical tests. One of those mechanical tests is the Buchholz generation test according to ISO 2815 with a measurement result of 0 0.8 millimeter. Here you see it's according to Buchholz and the result of this coating is 0 0.8 millimeter. But what does it mean? The performance of this test will lead us the result and meaning. We use beveled disc that has a very sharp edge. This disc um, with, with, with the sharp edge is placed on the surface under a constant test load of 500 grams. Here, this is this, the disc. And the longer the indentation length, the lower the hardness. And this is caused by the disc. It is applicable for a single and a multi-coat system and also suitable for coatings with plastic deformation. 
The sample preparation is also of high importance and should be communicated with your supplier or customer. The minimum panel size as well as the minimum stutter thickness are defined in the standard. Then, of course, the finish should be cured under agreed phone conditions. The panel should be conditioned at room temperature and 50% humidity, humidity for 16 hours before the test. How is the test done? You can see the instrument with the beveled disc here on the picture. Here, this is the instrument, and here underneath is the beveled disc. Um, it has to be carefully placed on the surface. Please avoid any tilting or sideboard movement. It is important that you down the little feet first. Here, in the front, there are two little feet. And then lower slowly the complete instrument in a very smooth movement. Uh, leave the instrument on the surface for 30 seconds plus minus one. Then remove the instrument and after 35 uh, seconds plus minus five, you can evaluate the indentation length in millimeters with a microscope. Here, Here um, in, your, in our example, the indentation length is 36 lines. One line marking is equivalent to 0.05 millimeters, resulting in 1.8 millimeters length. The measurement should be repeated five times on different er areas of the sample. This is recommended by the ISO specification. And then um, the average should be calculated. And why we need average? Because the value will be more representative. Now, let's have a look um, on the instrument. Here. The instrument um, uh, we offer to perform the Buchholz intendation hardness test are shown in the picture. This picture shows the Buchholz indentation tester, as you can see. It's a double cone block, and the effective load of the instrument is 500 grams, according to ISO. We also offer a microscope that has a magnification factor of 20 and an illumination angle of more than 60 degrees. Thus, you can see the complete indentation length fully illuminated. An alternative is the so-called Bucucut universal instrument, this one here. The Bucucut universal um, can also be used to measure film thickness, the adhesion, and of course the indentation hardness, according to Buchholz. Um, there's a wheel uh, with different blades um, and different positions can be placed here, this is the wheel here. It can be used for different um, blades and methods. For the Buchholz test, additionally, a weight needs to be put on the top of the instrument to reach an effective load of 500 grams. Here you see the load. How is the test um, position? The position and bias statements give you a guideline First, repeat repeatability means two results, same material, same operator, same instrument, and same laboratory with a 95% confidence. ISO says the absolute difference should, be, should not be greater than 0.23 millimeters. Second, reproducibility means, again, same material, but different operators, different instrument, different laboratories, now the confidence is 0 0.45 millimeters. So you see that it's also important to realize how repeatable and reproducible the test results are. Okay, let's have a look on another test method for hardness, the so-called 
pencil hardness or scratch resistant. The same technical data sheet from the previous sheet is used. And for this uh, e-code from Freilack, you can see the pencil hardness test on the left corner. The results of the pencil hardness test are recorded according to the wolf wilbur method, which is defined in ISO 15184. And the result for this test is 4H. Here, pencil hardness, the result 4H. But um, the question is, what does this value tell us? For this test method, an ISO standard as well as an ASTM standard exists. The principle is determining the resistance of a material of uh, two scratches due to friction by a sharp object. Here, this is the sharp object. The stronger the needed force, the higher the hardness. Important is that this method works only on smooth and flat surfaces. As in the previous test method, the sample preparation should be taken into consideration. Film thickness has to be measured and recorded in the test report. The test panel should be cured under agreed open conditions. Again, the test should be conducted 16 hours after the conditioning took place. Now, what is especially important is the procedure. It sounds simple, but it's actually not. In fact, you need some quite detailed information that has to be taken into consideration. First, how the pencil should be sharp is not easy. You should approximately um, five to six millimeters of the wood uh, remove by a special pencil sharpener. And it's also defined how the tip should look like. The front should be flat. And to achieve the flatness of the tip, an abrasive paper with grid number 400 with a constant angle of 90 degrees is used. Here, this is the tip. You see, it's no more, um, it's a flat tip, yeah? Maybe when it's straighter, you see it better here, yeah? It's, it looks, you have to, it looks like this here. And when conducting the test, the pencil should be held at 45 degrees and pushed away from the operator to guarantee a uniform pressure according to ISDM. The ISO specification is more detailed about how much pressure should be applied. The ex exact pressure is 7.5 Newton. Uh, the minimum visible marking length should be 3 millimeters. Therefore, ISTM recommends a stroke length of approximately 6.5 millimeter. Uh, it's a quarter of an inch. If no marking occurred during the test, the test needs to be repeated with an increasing hardness grade. In other words, you need to take a different pencil, which is harder. How is the test evaluated? According to ISO, the grading system is based on the hardest pencil that does not leave any marks. Here you can see the scale from ISO, here from hardness, blackness. And the pencil set consists of pencils from grade 9, 9H to 9B, and H being the hardest and B being the softest grade. B stands for blackness, means the softer the pencil gets, the darker it will look like. Medium is an F-type, which is very fine. F stands for fineness and is easy to sharpen. According to ISTM method, the pencil set consists of pencil with the highest hardness grades from 6H to 6B. 6H to 6B. 
it is a shorter set, and um, there are two types of tests that are specified. One is the so-called gouge hardness, which is the hardest pencil with a mark being minimum three millimeters long, and the scratch hardness, which is the hardest pencil that does not leave any marks. These two different types of tests can be performed based on the ISTM definition, and bo both norms recommend to repeat the test two times. The instrument that you can see that you can use for this purpose is the one already referred to the Wolf Wilburn method according to ISO. This is how the instrument looks like. Um, it comes with a set of 20 pencils to cover the range from 9B to 9H. It is basically a pencil holder with two wheels and a borehole at 45 degree orientation like defined in the method. A weight of 7.5 Newton is load on the pencil tip. Uh, as a conclusion, if you want to move the pencil over the surface, you will have automatically a 45 degree at the correct constant load. Additionally, it comes with a sharpener and abrasive paper grid. The simpler version of the method is defined in the ISTM norm. It contains just a set of pencils from 6H to 6B and a lead holder. In this case, the challenge is the constant pressure and the angle 45 degree. What is the position statement um, for ISTM? It was established by using three different coatings. Ten laboratories participated in tests with ten operators. For repeatability, two results, two operators using the same pencil and panels at the same laboratory are needed. If the results differ more than one pencil unit, it is suspect, means the test must be repeated. For reproducibility, it is required to compare different operators and different laboratories, wide different laboratories, to simulate the communication between suppliers. It is very important to always use the same pencil brand, with the same panels. Again, if more than one pencil unit differs, it should be repeated as the result is questionable. And why is the same brand so important? Let me show you. The main influence is the manufacturer. The possibility that the results vary, vary widely increases when the tests are conducted with pencils from different brands. Also, a variation from batch to batch may occur. Here we have an example where a test was conducted. On the x-axis, you can see nine different coatings. And um, in the graph, you see also different colors. These colors represent different users. And here on the y-axis, you see the different grades from 6B to 9H. For example, um, for, for yellow lines represent four different users. Um, when you look at panel number nine here, and you look to the yellow, we have four different yellow lines for a part, meaning the four people have quite different results. One per person gets the value of H, the next person gets the value of 2H, another person gets the value of 8H. As you can see, we have a large variation, and if you only use one brand, you have the potential to be within one pencil grade. We highly recommend that you always use pencils from the same manufacturer because you can have quite large variations between different manufacturers. Okay, moving um, on to the next hardness test. The Dudo test, this is more accurate method. Um, 
for scratch resistance and it's called Duro Test. Now the scratch is not done with a wood pencil but with a metal needle. And here you can see another example of a data sheet. It's uh, scratch resistant and climate stable coating resin made by the company Suda Chemicals. The hardness is evaluated after post cure using this metal needle device. In this data sheet, the resin is able to withstand 30 to 40 newtons, newtons which is quite scratch resistant. Yeah. Let's have a look to how this method is working. We have a specification, the DIN 55656, defining the procedure. The instrument comes with three different pressure springs of varying strength and color. The first one is from 0 to 3 newtons, the second one from 0 to 10 newtons, and the third one can cover up of 20 newtons. The springs are inside the tube housing, putting the pressure onto the metal needle. The altering spring tension indicates at which load a visible scratch appears. The instrument with the needle should be put onto the surface vertically and then evenly moved with 10 mm per second over a distance of 10 mm. Oh, sorry. Uh, the springs are inside the tube housing, putting the pressure onto the metal needle. And um, in a test tint, what, which is what is very important is, in order to have a constant tension on the springs, always reset the gouge when you change the spring. Yeah, this is this here when you use one times and. Don't forget to um, yeah, put it back to the zero position. Otherwise, the spring wheel lose their tension. There are different test result, results which can be taken into consideration. Test one is a pass-fail or yes-no test where the load is predefined. Test two is classification test where varying loads are tested. Um, this is done, for example, in the R&D uh, while developing a new formulation or comparing to different results. The test results would be the smallest force applied and it's recommended to repeat the measurement three times. Uh, and how can the damage be assessed? It is done visually. In the graph, you can see three different results here, track A, track B, and track C. In, this, in track A, in this case, the load was predefined as a visual description. You can call it as a continuous marking, which is visible. Track B is already more severely damaged Again, continuous marking, but now you can also feel it, it's touchable. Track C is the most severe damage. We have continuous cracking, which is the visual description in addition to the load result. So these were the test methods for hardness measurements. Um, now let's have a look on part two, flexibility. Mm, flexibility as defined in ISO 1520 as the resistance of coatings, paints, varnishes, and related products to cracking and detachment from the substrate. In the picture, you can see some typical applications where flexibility and elasticity is of high importance as the coatings are being 
plant. The different methods to evaluate flexibility that we will discuss in the remaining part of the webinar are the impact resistance, the cupping test, the bending test, and the pendulum damping method. Flexibility can also be called as the dynamic resistance of a coating and can be evaluated with fast or slow deformation. The band test can be either done in a slow deformation or in the fast way. In case of slow deformation, the elongation is evaluated. In the fast way, cracking is evaluated. The bending takes place over cylindrical or conical mandrels. The slow deformation test is called cupping test. The panel is deformed very slowly. This slow process of deformation can be done by mechanical or automated methods. The impact test, which is also called falling weight test, is a very fast deformation. The weight falls on the sample panel where the application is dependent on the weight. For this, different ISO and ISTM methods exist. We will have a closer look on them later on. This overview shows different types of applications and what tests are typical for them. For example, metal cans um, for beverages or food products always use a slow deformation process which can be performed with the cupping test. Another example are aluminum extrusions, for example, dwarf frames. They usually have to withstand a fast deformation, which can be simulated with, with an impact test using a falling weight. In the transportation industry, mainly the impact test is used, but for special applications, for example, production of airplanes, bending is performed. The tests are usually agreed between customer and supplier. Let's start with a band test defined by the ISTM 522 method A. Method A stands for the conical mandrel, which you can also see on the picture how the panel was bent. This method is as mentioned before, used in the aircraft industry. Let me show you this test method in a more particular way. A coated sheet metal is bent over a defined radius. It is possible to evaluate the elongation and the adhesion by performing a slow bending test or by performing a fast bending test. The results are as follows. The smaller the band radius you can achieve without having any failures, the greater the material flexibility. The test result in ISTM is defined by the so-called crack resistance and percent elongation, whereas in ISO it is only the crack resistance defined by the band radius. As a test instrument, cylindrical mandrels with different width depending on the thickness of the panel are used. Additionally, a conical mandrel tester for sample size from 75 to 104 or from 115 to 190 millimeter for larger panels can be used as well. Let's have a look on the test procedure according ISTM 522 method A. Method A. At least 
Three test panels should be pre prepared. A detailed sample preparation can be found in STM 823. The film sickness should also be recorded in a non-destructive fashion. Um, the crack resistance is evaluated by moving the layer through 180 degrees at uniform velocity of about one second. That means very fast. Yeah, here's the layer. And this one you have to move. In the ISO standard, the velocity is a little bit longer, about two to three seconds. To evaluate elongation, the movement should take place slowly. The lever should be moved at a speed of approximately 50 seconds. The test analysis contains either cracking resistance or elongation. For cracking resistance, the mandrel diameter at with cracking occurred is recorded. For elongation, a percent value is reported. How is the percent value evaluated? For the percent value of the elongation, the distance needs to be measured. That means the distance of the farthest end of the crack to the small end of the mandrel. Based on the calculated distance, the percent elongation can be computed by using this data table. This table can only be found in the ASTM 522 standard. Um, for example, the first end of the crack is three inches. Here, three inches. And on the y-axis, you can see the distance. At three inches, we put our ruler, ruler, ruler parallel to the x-axis, yep. where the ruler crosses the curve, we put an imaginary vertical line until it crosses the x-axis. The crossing point on the x-axis marks the elongation in percent. In this example, we have an elongation of about 5.2 percent here. <clears throat> but please keep in mind, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> this graph is um, valid for coatings film thickness up to 25.4 microns. <coughs> If the sickness is higher, a correction is needed. For this, the ISTM also has a second data table. Here, this one. Uh, the precision and bias statement according to ISTM is for repeatability smaller than 6% in elongation and for reproducibility smaller than 15% in elongation. To perform the band test, we offer the conical mandrel apparatus. It can be performed on steel or aluminum panels up to 20.3 centimeters wide. The metal cone, as you can see here in the picture, has a length of 200 millimeter with a diameter decreasing from 38 millimeter down to 3 millimeter. Here you can see the bending arm. Again, this is the bending arm. The built-in ruler is perfect for evaluating the elongation to measure the failure point. Therefore, you have a ruler attached on the instrument so that you know what the diameter at the point is. <clears throat> for the cylindrical mandrel, we have two different versions. The first one, which is in compliance with the ISDM method B, has different rods with diameters from 25 millimeters to 3.2 millimeters. This one here. It is the simplest method as you have no layer method but the manual performance. Yeah, you have to do it with your hand. You bend it with your hand. <clears throat> the second one described in ISO 1519 is a more comfortable version because it contains a lever here Different types of mandrels with different diameters 
from 2 millimeters up to 32 millimeters can be put in the device. As you can see, it is uh, a wider range of diameters, thus the method is more accurate. A common question is, when do you have to use a cylindrical or conical mandrel tester? I usually recommend to use of cylindrical tester for defined specifications with an already defined band diameter. The conical mandrel tester is usually used more often in R&D when you do formulations or new development of colors or benchmark comparison. So, um, this was the last slide of um, the mandrel tester. Now let's have a look on the second flexibility, the cupping test, which is a very important test in the coal coating industry. The cupping test is a typical test for beverage cans, which you can see in the picture. The measurement principle is to determine the deformability or elongation of a film. It is, a, it is, as mentioned before, a slow movement test and also gives information about adhesion properties. As we are doing it very slowly, we can evaluate gradual deformation by indentation. Here you can see the punch. This is the, this is the punch. We evaluate the resistance of the coating to cracking. When the cracking is very severe, the coating resistance to detachment from the metal substrate is judged. Let's have a look on the test method. The ISO 181520 is defined. At least two test panels should be measured. The sample preparation method the standard panels for testing and the film thickness should be agreed upon with your customer or suppliers and recorded on the test report. The panel shall be flat and free from distortion. The panel thickness should be between 0.3 and 1.25 millimeters and should have a recommended size of 70 millimeters in length and width. This slide explains the procedure, how to perform the test. Either you define a specified depth of indentation, means how many millimeters this punch should go into your surface, or you can define the failure due to cracking. The latter is more related to a production specification, which means that the coating should withstand this amount of indentation depth. The apparatus presses a cap of spherical punch into the test panel at a uniform speed. As you can see, it is very slowly, only 0.2 millimeters per second. On the machine, you can start the movement, and during the test, it is requested that you observe the panel through a microscope <clears throat> so that you can see when the failure takes place and you can stop the, the moving. The repeatability is plus minus one millimeter as defined in ISO, and the reproducibility means different laboratories is plus minus two millimeters. We offer two versions. The automatic capping tester, as you can see on the picture, has a very large C opening. This here, this is the C opening um, for small and large panels. The panels can have a thickness of up to 1.5 millimeters. The cupping speed, as defined in the ISO method, is 0.2 millimeters per second. And the microscope has a two and four times magnification possibility. Thus, you can easily see when the cracking takes place. A simpler version is the mechanical tap cupping tester as it is defined in ISO and theme specifications. You can choose from two tests. You 
you can choose from two test procedures. Yeah. Either the predetermined deaths or the minimum deaths required to cause the failure. It comes um, with a magnifying glass on a pivoting arm. Here is the glass with the arm. So that you can observe during the test what is going on. Okay, and the next test I want to show you is the fast flexibility method called impact test method or also falling weight test. As you can see in the picture, there are different types of models available. And in this overview, you can see there are two ISO impact testers and several ISPM impact testers. Different methods are defined dependent on the weight and the height of tube that can be applied for this test. The difference between ISTM and ISO is whether the weight and the punch are two in one, means one part or two different pieces. According to ISTM, weight and punch are two separate pieces. Let me show you a video where the test procedure is shown. Here you see the weight is put into the tube. They fixed it. The panels are inserted onto the punch. And then done the test. This is according to us, the m punch. punch, um, the weight are, the weight and the punch are two pieces. So um, the wall, um, this is sum up what we have seen in the video. The wall video is available <clears throat> on our website. In order you want to calculate the measurement result, you take the falling height times the weight. The result is your impact force, as you can see in the uh, video on the last slide. <clears throat> now we are coming to our last test, the pendulum hardness or pendulum damping test. As an example, you can see here a technical data sheet from the company Michelman. They produce lacquer finishes for parquet wood flooring. As you can see, two products are compared uh, semi 
gloss and high gloss lacquer. Under the test specification, the pendulum hardness is defined according to Koenig. After 28 days conditioning at room temperature, the pendulum hardness result is 75 seconds for the semi-gloss coating system and 150 seconds for the high-gloss coating system. Uh, what uh, do, the, do these time specifications indicate? The semi-gloss coating is much more flexible than the high-gloss coating. Or, in other words, the high-gloss coating is harder. How does the procedure look like? The test method is defined as an ISO and ISTM method. We measure the damping time of an oscillating pendulum. And the shorter the damping time is, the lower the hardness and higher the flexibility. In both methods, the sample probation is defined in detail. The minimum required film thickness for this test is 30 microns in ISO and 25 microns in EISDM. You can see um, the or no, I will show in the next slide. I will explain here. Um, there are two different types of pendulums, um, Koenig and Perso. Um, important um, for the test is when you insert the panel, it should be calibrated on the glass plate first. A release wire is attached to deflect the pendulum to a certain degree. For Koenig, it is 3 to 4 degrees. For Peso, between 4 to 12 degrees. And the acrylic cover, it's also of high importance to prevent disturbance by air movement in the room. Thus, the laboratory will not influence the measurement results. When it starts swinging, it has an automated count. It will give you a number of oscillations also in seconds. You do not have to watch the pendulum. You can wait until it beeps. You get a signal. Um, this table gives you an overview of Koenig and Perso. Here, the, it looks different, this pose. And you see also the the amplitude limits, the damping time, the pendulum weight. According to Peso, um, the swinging time is longer. Therefore, it is used for softer finishes. So now you see here our new um, pendulum damping instrument. It is a um, full automated instrument for measuring pendulum hardness in according with Koenig and Peso. It has automatic design, endures reliable and repeatable measurement of coating hardness by reducing operator intervention. You have a motor sample platform lift the sample into the pass position. Yeah, it's no more need. The old have, you have to do it by your hand, but now it makes automatically. And also the pendulum is positioned and released automatically. You have automatically counter with a signal. And the last point is also very nice, a pre-assembled draft sheet with easy access to it. It's no more needed that you um, build the cover by yourself. It, it's pre-assembled. You can start immediately. Also of interest is the precision and bias statement. It was conducted by STM with four laboratories, six coated panels covering a wide range of hardness and three hardness uh, measurements on each panel. The confidence level for Koenig regarding repeatability is suspicious if it's larger than 8%. For PESO, the confidence level is suspicious if it's larger than 3%. Concerning reproducibility, we have a factor of three between repeatability and reproducibility. This takes us to the end of the seminar. And let's see if there are any questions in the chat. Uh, but before we focus on your question, I would like to introduce to you some of my colleagues here. This is some of my colleagues. Um, the marketing manager is my boss, Gabriele Kiegler-Böckler. 
for conduct, continuing education manager is Henrik Volkert and Gagana Bettner responsible. And um, we also have an application specialist as well as a product manager for PTE. Here, um, this is the specialist in the state, and here the PTE manager, James Fasco. Uh, if you have any questions now or later concerning application, webinar, seminars, or general information, we will pledge to be in assistance to you. Now your questions. So um, I have a question here. Can the can the doodle test be done on a curved surface? Um, yes, this is possible. This is one of the advantages um, of the doodle test. So next question. When do we need to use König or Pezum pendulum hardness? Um, you can use both uh, Peso or König, both is possible, but I, or it's recommended to use when you have a, a soft um, sample uh, to use the Peso because it is more accurate. Um, then we have a question to the pencil tester. How can compare pencil results with doodle test results? Yeah, this is not possible. Um, all of these different methods cannot be compared um, in the results. And here um, you have both. ISO and RSTM method for testing. I'm wondering which exact method to select. Yeah, um, most of the time the specification are given. Um, if not, you have to communicate with your supplier and decide um, on a method. Okay. Um, Okay, now we are on the end of our time. Um, the next webinar or point where we can meet again is the next webinar about basic building blocks of color. Um, the question, for example, what factors play a fundamental role in the perception of color? What are a standard illuminant and a standard observer? Interaction between light and object, reflection, absorption, diffusion, fundamentals of SILAB color system will be answered. If you want to know more about the topic, please feel free to join this upcoming webinar on 10 and 11 of February. We are offering one on-site seminars customized to your application and needs. Um, you are warmly welcome to visit our website as well our, as, as our YouTube channel. On both sides, you will find useful information about our products, how to do videos, technical articles, and many more. I hope to meet you very soon again and wishing you a nice day.